All right, we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it here. Um, again, this is a packet capture tutorial in the Mitel and Shortel systems that we're going to go over today. What we're going to cover today is basically how to get into the system, what you can packet capture against, because there are some devices that you can easily do, some devices that are a little bit more difficult to do, and some devices that won't let you. Um, how to grab those and also what to look for in the maintenance guide so you know which, which ports are needed in the Shortel and Mitel environment. Again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior support engineer and SME over at Inflow Communications. I'm coming up on six years of unified communications experience, um, and I have uh, experience in the MyTel and Shortel platforms, as well as Ring Central and Genesis Peer Club. Um, before we get started, we do have one webinar already announced for next year. This is the last webinar of the year for us on this side, but we do have one coming up on the 30th of January about how to maximize your inflow support and success program benefits. So if that would be beneficial to you, that would be one to definitely take a look at there. And a little bit about inflow before we get started. Inflow Communications has a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. Voice is what we do. We don't branch into networking or anything else of that nature. So when you give us a call, you're going to get somebody that's well-versed in voice architecture and your platform, and they will be able to help you with anything you need. We are a, Sh a Shortel and Mitel Platinum partner, as well as partnered with Ring Central and Genesis Peer Cloud. We have offices and employees currently in 10 states and currently support over 180,000 endpoints and over 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. And we are maniacal about the customer experience. We wanna make sure that you get all the information that you could use and then some um, to make sure that your voice environment is giving you exactly what you need for your business. Here's a quick snippet of some of the customers that we support. And if we have any questions at the end here, there is a little question box that you can pop out um, questions for. Um, keep in mind, this is a fairly high level overview today of what we can do for packet captures in the system. Um, so we aren't going into details or specifics as to how to read those today. This is how to obtain those captures. We may do a um, troubleshooting and um, more capture capture reading centric webinar in the future. This is to show you how to get these and where to find the information you would need for these captures. So without that, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it here. And you'll see I am actually currently logged into a Connect Director on my side. Um, we are gonna be focusing on the Connect platform today. Um, I will tell you the differences for the actual capture um, as, once we get into it, um, so you know where to go in 14.2 as well. Um, you're going to note that a lot of what I'm going to show is going to look very similar to diagnostics and monitoring, and that is because that is actually where you're going to run the captures. So let's talk a little bit about these packet captures and what we can do real quick before we jump into this. Um, starting with uh, Shortel 14.2, um, they introduced a suite of, of uh, monitoring tools called diagnostics and monitoring, and it does give you a lot of information on the system and lets you see a lot of things at a glance. Um, but one thing it also added was the ability to very easily run remote remote packet capture procedures from Director itself that will allow you to grab um, captures from the switches and also from certain models of phones. Um, not all models are supported. Um, as a general rule, if you have any of the SG model switches, such as the SG30s, 60s, and 90s, um, T1Ks and anything newer, like the Mount Baker switches that were introduced with Connect, as well as any virtual switches, those will all support this procedure. If you have the older full width short tail switches, such as the 120 24s and the 60 12s, um, they can still be packet captured against, but this will be a much more complex procedure than what we're going to be going over today. Um, so if you have any of those and you're having any issues, definitely come to us. And really, as a general rule, if you're having any issues and want us to take a look, you can you can come to us as well so we can grab these captures and help you run them through. But this is just to show you what we can do to actually grab these. And so what I've done is I do have in my lab environment, I do have a switch that we can pull a capture from just so I can show you what our, our protocols and measures are for. Um, on the left side, you're going to see a you, you'll see up in the uh, bar where we can choose all of our options such as administration and currently I'm on the system tab. All the way over on the right, there's a little health kit and it says diagnostics. And when we click on that, oh, that's fun. I might have to log out and log back in. Give me one second here because it is not loading the way I want it to. 
Let's do this. And this should just take a second here. Oh, that's fun. Give me one second. I'm going to actually get into the server itself and see if it's doing the same from the server. If not, I'll just have to pivot to a different platform to show you the same thing. So it might just take a moment here. Yeah, interesting. Okay, stand by. I'm going to give us a workaround. So it'll just take me a couple minutes here. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and talk about what we can do to make this work. Um, what we can do is, um, in order to get the packet capture, all we have to do is click on that that health kit, and that will bring us right into um, the the diagnostics and monitoring page. It'll let us choose what pieces of the system we can actually do a packet capture against. And if you'll bear with me here, I'm just logging into another system here so that I can show you what I'm talking about. And this should just take a second here. And I apologize for that. It was working previously, but I am in a lab environment that is technically in an unsupported environment. So I'm not necessarily surprised it broke down. Um, but this will allow us to show you everything that we need to as well. So that won't be an issue here. So same thing, I'm in a director here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this health kit here or diagnostics. And you'll see there are two things that pop up. One you may not have seen before if you're on earlier versions of Connect, which is the trunk test platform. They are currently working on rolling the trunk test tool into the director itself, so it won't be on that Visual Basic tool anymore. Um, and that will be showing up in future versions of Connect. Um, but what we are interested in is the remote ca packet capture here. And so when I click on this, it's going to bring up two panes very similar to what you would see in an environment for um, diagnostics and monitoring in 14.2, which is the exact same place that you would go to do um, this packet capture. You would actually go to diagnostics and monitoring, and then you would click on remote packet capture from within that, and it would get you to the same page. And you'll notice here there are a bunch of devices here. Um, you'll notice that it will show a device type of switch. And if I go down, we even have some phones here. So to go over that real quick, the uh, any any of those switches that we talked about, so the half width shore gear switches, as well as the newer Mount Baker switches that um, came out when Connect was introduced, as well as 400 series phones, um, are all able to be packet captured by the system without having to set up a port mirror or anything else in place of um, that um, device, so that you're able to get that done. And it will actually pull it and um, deposit it directly onto the server. So as an example here, if I wanted to do a quick packet capture on this backup virtual switch, which I will use because that can't interfere with anything here, I can just select this uh, this switch. I can hit start up at the top. When I hit it, it's going to pop up a little window that's going to ask me what I want to actually set up. So the first thing you'll see here is that packet capture duration, which is currently set to 20. It is in minute increments. And you'll note it, it does have a 120 minute maximum. Um, as a general rule, especially if you're doing this in a production environment during the middle of the day, um, and especially, especially if you are a very busy um, voice environment, so if you take a lot of calls in one time and those switches will be under um, fairly heavy load, I highly recommend, if you can do it, not to let this capture duration go over more than five minutes. That's going to allow you to get the data you need, but more importantly, is going to stop the switch from becoming overloaded, which could potentially cause call quality issues. Or in very rare cases, I've actually seen switches fall over um, while the packet capture is going if they're also getting slammed with calls. So that's important, an important thing to note here. Um, under that, you're going to notice that there are different protocols that you can capture. So if you want to look for specific things, you definitely can. You can also just capture every protocol. As a general rule, if we're troubleshooting a call a call control, call quality, or some or some other sort of issue, like maybe your your switch is going up and down to other to other sites, or you're having an issue um, just being able to call from site to site to one specific site, we highly recommend that you just capture every protocol because the issue may not necessarily be a particular port or a specific port that we're looking at, but it might be other traffic we're getting. Um, as an example, um, Shortel switches do not like seeing IPv6 traffic. And in fact, it is um, the best practice and recommendation of MITEL to turn off IPv6 on your um, NIC for your server to remove that from the equation. 
Um, so things like that can, can affect you. And that is more of a case by case basis. But just to make sure that we can see everything, I highly recommend we always capture every protocol. So what I'm gonna do here just as a, um, just as an example is I'm just gonna do a quick two minute capture. I don't expect we're gonna see too much on this, but I want you to see what the switch will do and what you'll see up at the top here um, when, when this starts happening. So I'm just gonna capture every protocol. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a two minute capture duration. I'm gonna hit save here. And you'll get an op a, a little box saying your capture was successfully submitted. Progress will be displayed shortly. And so you'll see here, I've got um, the switch up here. It now says it's logging all protocols. It shows the last log start date, so the last time the packet capture went through. The number of bytes written, which will refresh as I hit the refresh tab up the top, and then the duration, which is two minutes. And that will always show the overall duration. It's not going to show the amount of time that is left. So if I click on this here, I don't expect there's gonna be a whole lot. Yeah, there's only 51 kilobits in the actual packet capture here. If this was a production switch that was actually working in the system, then you would see a lot more here. Um, in this particular case, because this is a backup switch that isn't in play and is just hang, hanging out in standby, we're not going to get a whole lot of data. Um, but this is by design just to make sure we don't have any issues in the middle of the day. Um, once this finishes, um, which will take a couple minutes, it would actually um, then display down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and force that issue here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh one more time. I'm gonna click on that same device. And this is something you can do when you're, when you're confident that you've gotten the information you want as well. So let's say you're having an issue with, with calls coming in um, and you want to run a packet capture on your trunk switch to see what kind of signaling you're getting. You could place a five minute capture in, which would be more than enough time to place an example call, place that example call. And then now that you know your caller ID and that information, you can then click on this device and change this command from start to stop. When you hit apply, it's going to confirm that you wanna do that. Are you sure you wanna perform the capture action for the selected devices? I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And it'll say your request to, cap to stop capturing succeeded. And then down at the bottom, you'll see that there's a new previous log file there. Um, it'll tell me the switch IP address and MAC address, the device name, the user that submitted it, which in this case is the fax machine that we use to log into this system, when it was logged, how big it is, and also the file itself, which is in a hyperlink format. If I click on the file itself, then it will actually download the file um, from the server itself. I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and save that here. And then I believe we have Wireshark on here. Okay, we do not. So I'm gonna pull this across so you can see this here. Give me one second. Just to show you that this is a standard Wireshark file. So this will just take a moment because it's 206 kilobits. Get off there. I'm just gonna paste that onto my desktop so that we can take a look at it here. And it is a PCAP format, so it is going to open in Wireshark here. Um, and you'll notice that it, it, it works just like any other Wireshark capture. And because we captured every protocol, it is a wide open capture. It's grabbing everything that's coming into the, the uh, NIC on the device itself. So you can see all of that information. And in this particular case, because it's not doing a whole lot, it's really just talking out to the server and saying, hey, do I need to be used as a spare? Um, right now, there's not a whole lot going on. But just as a, a general glance, um, I can see here, a few ports that I recognize right off the bat. Um, the, this one is very, very important, which we'll go over here momentarily. This one is for TMS connectivity between switches and servers. This is the one that provides the heartbeat um, between the system. And if this, if this port can't pass, then you can run into issues um, with communications from device to device. They might both be up. They may also even be both talking to um, the rest of the system. But if two phone switches, for example, from if one from site A can't talk on that port across to site B, um, then essentially what happens is those sites will think that the other one is offline and any attempts to call extensions that hang off that switch will, will result in your calls either going to voicemail or you getting a message saying that the extension isn't valid, which is the system saying it can't actually reach the extension. Um, all of this information that you would need for this particular um, issue was actually going to be in the maintenance guide, which I'm gonna pull over here now. 
And just to show you here, um, this is the latest copy of the My, My Voice Connect Maintenance Guide. Um, there are similar guides available for 14.2 as well, and they both work the same. Um, there is a port usage appendix in both of them. Um, in the, con in the uh, Connect Guide, it is um, Appendix D, and it's going to be broken down into three parts. That's because there's a lot of ports that the system uses, and they are all different depending on what they're talking to. Now it is it is um, in a handy matrix that you can use so that you can see at a glance what each device uses when it's talking to specific things. So if you're having a specific problem like your switch can't talk to the server or your switch can't talk to a particular phone, you can take a look at this guide, use this in conjunction with packet captures to see if there is an issue on the network or elsewhere or potentially even the uh, the media is getting to the device but the device isn't accepting it for some reason. Um, and you can see this um, in this guide here. So to give you a little example of how this how this looks, you'll see on the left side, there is an originated device and then there's a destination device. And so you'll see here for, um, for the switch to switch, what I just talked about, that UDP 5440, that is your location service. So that's how the switches actually communicate with each other, say, hey, I'm alive, this is where I'm at, these are what extensions I have. And that's why that, that um, particular port is critical for that operation. Um, it's used as the heartbeat in the system. Other ones that are important are that 5441, which is used for call control. So that's like the call setup, the ring back, um, being able to answer your calls. And the media stream, the, that range in 10,000 to 20,000 is RTP. So that's gonna be your actual call audio. So just as an example, this will give you some information there. Um, scrolling down, I'm gonna go ahead all the way down so I can look at the, at a server here. So you'll see here, this is the headquarters server. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of different ports there. And this is gonna go over what the server needs from each particular device um, in order to be able to communicate. And you can you can um, essentially assume that the majority of these ports are gonna need to be bi-directional. If one is being used from the server to a switch, the switch is likely using that same to the server. So um, you wanna make sure that these are open bi-directionally. So this can be used to also to not only validate that um, things are working across the system in conjunction with the packet captures, but it can also be used um, if if you need to lock down your network for any any particular reason. Like if you have a a mandate, if you're in the healthcare sector or if you need, or in the banking sector, which has some more stringent requirements, you can use this to make sure that the right ports are open. Um, and this is a as a general rule, these ports are all extremely necessary in order for the system to operate correctly. Um, there are some where you may have 99% of your things working, but the one critical thing that you need may fail as a result. Um, so definitely make sure that everything in here is open. As a general rule though, typically they, they always are and there's something else going on if some, some um, port is not being used. Other things that we look for, um, which I don't have a capture readily available with the information on it, but um, things to look for in, in your environment. If you see port unreachables, obviously that means that um, a, a device is getting um, information back from a switch or router that it can't actually reach the destination and IP that is trying to get to on the port it's trying to get to. Usually this is because of filtering or some other issue. Um, in recent cases, we have seen some packet fragmentation across VPNs that can cause that issue as well because Shortall does require a MTU of 1400. Um, and you will see that information in here. Um, the other one that is big that comes up a lot is ICMP redirects, um, which are used very commonly for redundant um, links for other applications. The Chortel system does not play well with ICMP redirects. And so what will happen is if a port that is required for the system gets one of those, which you would see in Wiretrack is a black ICMP packet that will say ICMP redirect for host. And if you drill into it, you will be able to see the port that is being used. Um, that will actually um, stop the switch from being able to communicate until the switch is rebooted or um, commands are restored, which can sometimes be done via a ping command on the switch itself. So these are all common things that you can see there um, in order to get that, get that information from the packet capture and have a good idea to take a path forward there. Um, if you ever run into an issue with a switch not being able to pack capture, um, such as you click on it in the remote pack capture here, which I'll bring back up, and you start it, 
and after you start it, instead of under session running and logging status, it says it says client failed. That means that the switch was not able to properly accept the port open for the packet capture itself. Um, there is a couple of uh, defects in prior builds of Connect where switches would just need to have their firmware flashed in order for that to work. So that is worth a shot as an after hours um, type type of thing. The other thing we can do in that particular scenario is if it is a Linux based switch, such as the virtual switches or the uh, or the uh, newer Mount Baker switches that you run on a Linux backend, we can actually use the Linux um, prompt to run a TCP dump to get the same information. And then we can use a tool called WinSCP to grab that information off the switch. This is the same application that we use if there's any sort of switch error that results in a core dump that we need to get over to Mitel Engineering. Um, it would be something that we will cover on another, on a, another um, webinar here. Um, and with that, that is pretty much it. Just to show you the phone as well, it works exactly the same. There's a little bit less that you capture. But if I click on the phone here, make sure I don't have this clicked at the top, hit start. There's a, there's a few different um, things that the phone itself looks at. So you'll see here there's CAS and TLS, SIP and TLS. Um, same kind of general scenario though here. We like to leave those packet captures to within five minutes if we can. We also like to capture every protocol because it's not always just what we suspect that will be the problem on the capture. It could be any, any variety of things that we might see um, and having everything open is a good thing to do. And so with that, um, that's what we had for you today. Um, this is a way to basically self-sustain packet captures. It's nice to have if you're gonna run any network changes or you suspect something might be having a problem on your network. Um, and I do also want to make sure everybody is aware um, that we will take a look at packet captures and help you determine the cause. We won't be able to jump in and suggest network changes because that's not our wheelhouse and it's not what we do, but we can decipher the capture based on what we're seeing in the short tail environment and tell you what we're seeing which can help you help point you in the right direction as well. So feel free to use our support processes for that. That's what we're here for. And so with that, um, that is what we had today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my um, presentation here. And throw up our current customer resources. Um, just so, so you're aware here, for our current customer resources, you can send us an email at support at um, and we will get back to you in the order that those are received. That's great for non-urgent requests or for information requests. Um, we also do have a support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com. In fact, we actually ran a webinar on that portal um, just last week. Um, in that portal, we would be able to see all of your tickets with the, with the uh, system that you have open with Inflow. Um, all at a glance, you can view, reply, and see the current status of those. And if you're the administrator of your overall system, we can also set you up so that you can see all the tickets that anybody has opened up in your system um, with Inflow. So you can see all of them at one glance. And then for urgent or um, issues that you just need information on immediately, you can give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. Um, we do have a three ring answer policy. You're not gonna be on hold for 10 minutes waiting for one of our engineers to answer the call. And when they do, they will be able to get you the information that you need. If you need more information on inflow support packages, you can send us an email at sales at inflowcommunications.com or you can give us a call at 844-446-3569. And I'll give us just a minute or two here to see if any questions do pop up. Currently, it looks like we don't have any, but I'll give it just a second here. All right, well, it looks like we're good. So again, my name is Tom Lyons, Senior Engineer with Inflow Communications. I want to get, um, thank you guys for coming out to our webinar today. Um, we do look forward to seeing you in the future. And if we don't talk to you before the end of the year, happy holidays, have a great new year, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful day.